I give you a PDF of the problems. You can work them out, figure out what your answer is going to be. If you get stuck, like I said in the announcement, you want to crack into your old notes, see what you can find, and try and work these ones out on your own. But if you can't get it, then that's what this video is for. I'm going to show you exactly how to do each one. So we've got this little introduction here. Answer the following questions, blah, 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 blah. I've got these five different molecules. Each of these is an organic molecule. Some are acids, some have you know, no functional groups at all. These top two are just going to be nonpolar molecules. The bottom three have some oxygens on them. So, and so part A asks you why pentane is a liquid and propane is a gas at a particular, well, it's actually standard temperature and pressure. And so let's look at propane. Here's propane. Here's pentane. So it looks like pentane's a lot bigger. There are no polar bonds on here at all. There's no, elect you know, the electronegativity of carbon and hydrogen is the same. So Right, so this is an intermolecular forces question. Now I'm not going to write out complete sentences just because this pen's kind of a pain, but you know you probably should get in the habit of it. Um, but the intermolecular forces for both pentane and propane, both molecules are just London dispersion, right? They're just London dispersion. But because pentane is larger, so pentane is larger, and that means a larger field of electrons, and that means stronger London dispersion forces. And with stronger forces, stronger IMF, that means a higher boiling point. Now, do you need to say all of that? Um, yeah, you probably do. You probably need to say all three of these things that I said. All right, the only forces are London dispersion forces. Pentane is larger, so it has, I guess this is really only two things. Um, pentane is larger. So it has a bigger field of electrons and therefore more intermolecular forces, more London dispersion forces. And stronger IMFs mean that your boiling point is going to be, um, it's going to be higher. It's going to be harder to get those molecules apart. So I got another intermolecular forces question with part B here. Um, only this time we're looking at methanol versus propane. And we can see right here, right, even though methanol is a lot smaller and therefore London dispersion forces are, are smaller, but we've got an oxygen-hydrogen bond here, which means that's a polar bond, which means we can do hydrogen bonding. We have both the oxygen and the hydrogen, so we can do hydrogen bonding. Remember, hydrogen bonding is just a form of dipole-dipole, but you want to make sure you say hydrogen bonding. AP wants you to say a hydrogen bonding. I don't know if they'll give you points for just dipole-dipole when it's a hydrogen bond. So remember to do hydrogen bonding. You need oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, and a hydrogen on another molecule that is bonded to one of those three things as well to get hydrogen bonding. And we have that with the methanol. Methanol has hydrogen bonding and the only intermolecular force and I would write that out if I were you know actually taking the test between propane molecules is those London dispersion forces and again I would write that out if I was actually writing this this answer Hydrogen bonding is much stronger. So it takes more energy to separate methanol molecules. And this is two points. Uh, part A was also two points. So basically, these are the two things you need to say, more or less. I kind of overlapped a little bit of one of the points, I think. 
Looking at part C, hybridization. So this should be easy. Remember, we have that super shortcut. All you have to do is look at how many things are stuck to it. Doesn't matter how many bonds, how many things. Either it's a lone pair or it's uh, another atom stuck to it. Just total those up. And so hybridization of the carbon atom in each of the following methanol. There's only one carbon atom right there, and it's got one, two, three, four things stuck to it. And remember, we count them like this. If it's got one thing stuck to it, it's S. If it's got two things stuck to it, it's SP. If it's got three things stuck to it, it's SP2. And if it's got four things stuck to it, it's SP3. So that's simple, just counting, right? So looking at methanol, four things stuck to it, that's SP3. Methanoic or formic acid, that's this guy right here. I got a carbon here, and it looks like there's only three things stuck to it, so that would be SP2. Done. One point for each of those. Draw the complete Lewis electron dot. You're not going to get a question like this on this year's AP exam, but uh, you might get questions that have different Lewis dot structures, and you'll have to sort out, oh, what, which one's correct, or it might say what molecule or what atom would be stuck here, and they'll have a little star or something like that. So it's possible that they'll have some kind of equivalent of drawing the electron dot that you could still just type in. So it's not a bad idea to be able to do this, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I got three carbons, so I'm just going to stick those three things together. I got a bunch of hydrogens. I got a couple of oxygens. I know this is an acid. So an organic acid's got this carboxyl carboxylic acid group on it, the COOH, right, that we often remember when we write uh, acetic acid, we do CH3COOH. That's one common way to write it. And that COOH, that's this guy right here. That's that carboxylic acid tells it that's the acid. That's the hydrogen you're giving. In this case, they put the hydrogen that you're giving there, but you got your two oxygens, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. And now everybody's happy. And you can check if you want, but everybody should be happy there. That's not a very difficult one to do, propanoic acid. Of course, don't forget, you gotta put all of your electrons on here. So don't forget those. So explain the ob following observations about the two carbon oxygen bonds in the methanoate, the formate anion. So the formate anion, so here's formic acid. Formate is the conjugate, just like acetate was the conjugate of acetic acid. Um, and so we can even draw that if we like. We've got a double bonded oxygen, uh, we've got a hydrogen, and we've got a single bonded oxygen with the minus one, right? Because it's got that minus one charge right there. Um, and of course, I need my extra electrons on my oxygen. All right, um, it says you may draw the electron dot diagram. Now, if this were me, you know, they're not gonna have you draw it on the test if they had a question like this, but you want to have paper with you too. So it's another thing to have with you, calculator, periodic table, um, equation sheet, and scratch paper. You're gonna need a lot of paper so you can write things out and try and solve some of this stuff and then type in your answers. Um, so make sure you have plenty of paper handy too. And something good to write with. All right, so I want to explain the two carbon oxygen bonds in the methanoate formate ion HCO2 minus have the same length. Yeah, they do. I look at this guy and I think, no, they don't. That's a double bond, which is going to be shorter, and this is a single bond. But then I remember that this is what's happening. And when they tell you it's got the same length, that should help you remember this too, right? This is resonance, which you should remember like an old friend. So it's got a negative charge, and this is my double bonded oxygen here. This pen's kind of garbage for drawing electrons, but everything doesn't end up where you want it quite. So I have resonance between these two structures here, going back and forth between these, which means in reality, right, even though we draw it like this, what's really going on, and I do not expect you to draw all this in uh, a diagram, but that's all right, just as long as you understand it, Remember what resonance means. It means this negative charge is distributed over this whole side of the molecule. Um, and so these bonds are actually some kind of hybrid between a double bond and a single bond. And so therefore they are the same length. Um, so to explain that observation that they have the same length, you would say something like this is, uh, there are two different resonance structures. And so in reality, these are between a single bond and a double bond because there is a pair of electrons that goes back and forth between those two bonds. And looking at the second part of this question, it's only an extension of the same thing. So the length of them is the is uh, an intermediate between the length of the carbon oxygen bond and methanol. And the carbon oxygen bond and methanol is a single bond, and the carbon oxygen bond and methanol, which is a double bond. So 
This bond is in between a single bond and a double bond, and therefore in between a single bond and a double bond, bond of length. It's really um, one and a half electron pairs kind of being shared on average. And so you would just have to explain that this is a resonant structure where, where the two resonant structures mean each of those bonds is partially double bond and partially single bond. You could be very vague and just explain that it's between the two and you're gonna be fine as far as that goes. So hopefully you did pretty well on those. I'll have another set of questions for you on Friday. Remember, it's really important that you do these as we go, right? Don't save them up till the last week. You're not gonna refresh, have a refresher course in the last few days. Do it over these weeks, spread them out, and that'll help cement that learning, okay? You got this.